So welcome back everybody to another round of games from the Ghost Beater of War Thunder Ground Forces. This will be a compilation of different games I had this week. And we will showcase the evolution of my playstyle and the different tactics I employed over the big course of the games I had. We're starting off here in this panther on a very traditional point here overlooking the sea capture point as well as the ridge line opposing this which is basically the ridge line where all the enemy team normally um, at the beginning of the game is getting into heavy firefights with this ridge line. You can see there are two T-34-85s up there. This is the first time I really had, a pos had the possibility to look at this map in detail. I saw several videos beforehand and had some very um, short games on this, but this is the first real time since the video started and this map was introduced that I could familiarize myself with the lays of land as well as the gray features. For example, things like this hole between the two rocks here, from where you can shoot at the enemy while staying in, in heavy cover. Unfortunately, I didn't calculate for the shell drop here, so my shell goes a little low and the T-34 gets away. These are all realistic battles, so the shell drop isn't marked by an X. You can see me here, I'm scanning this ridge line. As you can hear, there's some cannon shots fired below. There's a T-34, I take a snapshot at the side of his shirt and actually by destroying the, him, I deny the enemy the capping of the C point. So, put him back behind hard cover here. One thing I'm doing wrong quite a lot is that I'm actually going over here sideways. You can see here he is being decapped, but just as I was about to move over there to have out, I have spot this T-34-85 on the opposing ridge line. He's now there. At the base of the turret, air eh, of the base of the bridge here. But my shot goes low again. He damages my suspension. I feel like a total moron because I gave him a wonderful shot at my side. So I'm angling my tank a little bit more, scanning the ridge line. And if you look closely, you can see him popping up for a second up there. At the base of the bridge again, I'm setting on fire, but he gets his vengeance and his last time, uh, his last shot basically damages my suspension, so I'm really slow now. So then the heavy German tanks are naturally already, and that's one of the things I've really found out this week. Especially with the German heavy tanks, you have to build up your momentum and have to keep up uh, or keep your momentum going to really get them to shift from position to position. And if you don't know the maps, you can easily uh, go over obstacles that you won't see at the fir uh, at first, but that really mess up your your momentum, your flow. So I'm spotting this SU-100 here 
trying to, to shoot on the rebound of my braking, but I timed it wrongly and um, the shot actually goes high. Oh. Aiming for the lower glacis here, but only hitting his uh, frontal armor. And he now actually still, is still trying to, to shoot one of the enemy, uh, of the friendly tanks over there, the other side of the bridge. He comes about and I'm trying to get the hell out of here because I don't want to be in front of his cannon that fires 25 kilo shots. Which basically can kill me and penetrate me from any angle. So I'm looking around here. He must have been be behind that rock formation that I was aiming there. Aiming at there, but I don't see him. Now you can actually see he's being killed by one of our tanks that came around from the back. So I'm moving forward, looking for a possibility to get down to the dried out riverbed here. Checking again this ridge line overlooking B. There are the less known positions of the enemy tanks was up er, um, around the point A and if one of them decides to peek over the ridge line he has great shots on everybody that's in their area here around point B. So I'm reversing a little bit. Um, actually I've decided to go over the bridge here which is normally a very dumb play but considering that I have damage suspension I'm thinking about trying to stay on flat surfaces and on the rolls to build up my momentum which will backfire in a second you'll see I'm actually damaging my track once I get down this bridge there you go so not really my day today this I'm entering the second bridge here, there's another panther behind me. I'm still scanning up that ridge line there, looking for outlines of enemy tanks. Because if they destroyed me, they could pretty much kill me as well as the tank behind me. But the last tank is basically on the other side of this rock formation here is already engaged by a friendly tank. So, there you can see he's been set on fire. He's actually destroyed. So, there we two win. Next couple of videos will be different approaches I've tried over the um, course of the next few games I had in this map and we'll close with another map uh, another run of this map where I basically which was basically the last um, game I've played this week and where everything just fell into place and I played a really good game even though I was, I, I was defeated at the end. So in the meantime you'll see me here in my Yak Panzer. The Yak Panzer is basically the, the, the Panther that I'm, not the tank that I'm now specializing in. Getting down into this trench here. Firing on the move on this T-44. Setting him on fire. I don't want to stop. There's another T-44 down there at point B as well as an IS-2 in the 9044 variant and while I've hit, missed the T-44 slightly the IS-2 basically sets me on fire and I'm cooking off here. So next time I'll try to go along with these the road here. I spot the I, another IS-2 right at the point B and you can hear my 
disappointment here because basically he instantly sets me on fire and I'm burning up so it doesn't have any um, it doesn't make any difference if I'm trying to drive up to him or anything so I'm in front D again here race over here to try to to find different places where you can hold down on this tank which will come in handy later but as there's no one coming here and I don't see any enemy tanks here I'm decided to go up this hill I already some enemies at our spawn point so I don't want to getting uh, to get exposed here. Now you will see one of the thing, many things I had this week. There's a shot basically just missing me by interest, and I know I have to, to really shift here to get out of the firing line. Hope to achieve that by moving over here. I'm checking back here. See if I can see anybody behind me or it looks clear. And there's the T-44 right in front of me. So That didn't fare too, uh, it didn't fare too well in that engagement, so next time I'm trying to use the incline on the C point. And now you will see actually what devastating effect one um, enemy tank can have if they're located in the um, area where I was in the first video. Because there's an IS-2 that actually climbed up there and I'm, while I'm checking back here I can see him you can see him firing and he basically killed me instantly all the while my teammates are down below and trying to cap black morons because they didn't realize there's an enemy even behind them so in the next situation you can see me here again I'm went in this little ditch there uh, below the ridge line of the A uh, of point A and I found out that if you hold down on on inclines with these Jack Panther the enemy has a really hard time to to hit you or to, to damage you through your sloped armor. I put already one into this D44 which tries to rush me. I have already reloaded to make a short work of him. Now I'm actually do. I'm not quite sure if it would have actually benefited me if I would have blocked this IS-2 and um, gave him a shot to, on the on the frontal armor of me. This way, he, he shot past me, could turn his turret. I had no video, I had no chance of actually turning around and, and getting a shot at him, so. So, this brings me to the last video. This is the video where basically all of it, all of the experiences I have had until now, just clicked into pl uh, into place. At the beginning, I'm starting basically off where my first video started off as well. But I decided to go to down this decline here to towards point C, and I want to go up on the other opposing side to see how far I can go before the enemy tanks. Um, realize that they are being outflanked 
I'm damaged my tracks already. As is good fashion this week on my on my tanks on my games. So. I made it all across the valley, starting to climb up to the enemy spawn here. Pre-aiming on the corner. I'm slowly making my way up there. But I suddenly see that actually point C is being kept by an enemy tank. So I turn around, make my way up below the bridge here, and hope to see if I can get a shot on off to this enemy. All the while, looking over my shoulder for the on the ridge line, keeping an eye on if there are any tanks there. Because if there are tanks there, they could really easily get a shot into my side or back. This time I'm too slow to actually um, decline the the capping. Or I'm killed the I killed the capper anyway, and I'm now pushing along, following my original plan to get up here and see if I can flank the enemies. I saw this T-3485 up there, and unfortunately, even though I'm, I stopped and thought I had given him enough lead, I actually went a little bit low and he survived, so I continue on forward. There seems to be a pretty big fight over there. One of my teammates is in need of help. I'm moving forward through this small wood here, woodland area. And I'm trying to, on purpose here, to not run down too many trees because this should provide pretty good cover but if the enemy sees trees falling they pretty much know that you're there so checking around here so I can see it. other tanks when I spot this T-34-85 there and he got shot on into me damaging my suspension I damage him as well, but I don't want to hang around here in being so exposed. I want to get down there, get hold down. There's a T-30, uh, T-45, no, is it, was it a T-44 behind me? Anyway, I'm trying to go down here, and this is basically, this particular area where I'm right here is very good for the Jack Panther because you can get hold down here and you can if you're not fired upon from the ridge line above you you can weather basically almost everything here I'm trying to get a shot here at the T34 no, only miss uh, only hitting the rock in front of him and you can actually hear there were engine noises and A 
as you can see I'm trying to get a shot here while well, actually out of nowhere a wild E3485 appears which seems absolutely oblivious to the to the fact that I've just shot several meters right next to him I'm being shot here uh, being hit here but still setting here on fire so now oh, my tracks are damaged you can see he's cooking off over there there are several tanks in front of me now so This position I'm in is very good for the tank. You can see basically I'm the last guy in my team. And this position here enabled me to kill two more tanks of the enemy. There's an SU-100 and this is actually a really nice play of them. I don't know if it's planned or not. This SU basically jacks me up so the T-34 can get a shot at my lower place and destroy me. So that's it. Hope you really en uh, you enjoyed this little view of the Ash River map, as well as the different approaches you can have here. I generally find that when I'm trying to get a, a going the go the route over sea, that I'm basically more effective than trying to, to press on B or A and the aggressive style that I've developed over the, this week's games really sometimes caught the enemy team on the back foot and I've had great success with it. So hope you enjoyed this and to, hope to see you on the next one. Bye.